Hey everyone, this is Nitro. So I'm just logging on in the morning onto Langrissa Mobile and the update has been released. So we see here, for example, there's the new banner, Spirit of Starlight. There is the time limited login events, which I'm going to go into because I want to claim the daily rewards here, right? So we see here that the first item I claim is gold, the next item is Oracle and Ore, then some exploding hard keys, five more Trinity vouchers, and an epic martial spirit. So definitely want to log in every day to claim these items, right? As long as you log in and click open this event and claim, you're going to get the items. And it runs, even though there's only five items, the event actually runs for longer than that, from the 9th to the 15th, so that would be seven days. So you have lots of time. All right, so next is the fireworks festival which is another event right i will do videos on that later uh, for some extra irony this event is actually in the event revival section or it previously was it's actually not there anymore but funnily enough it was there beforehand uh, because well i think the chinese server got this event way earlier than we did so it was actually in the event revival section as a result. So, moving on. Um, so, I'm actually surprised that that pop-up keeps popping up. It's a good thing, because it reminds you to pick it up, right? So, I guess every time you come in here, it'll say new, time limited login. And finally, of course, there is the Echoes of Light event, as always, with a new hero banner, right? There's Akaya's super cute Little Red Riding Hood skin. And of course, Brenda's Musketeer skin, right? Um, but <laughs> given that it costs $278, um, I don't know if very many people will get these skins. Frankly, if I were to actually spend $278, you know, I'd probably mix up Lambda, Mystery Knight, and uh, Akaya's skin. Not, re not really a big fan of the Musketeer skin. Although, the sprite is nice. But, in any case though, so, at this point, um, I'm just going to, oh, of course, if you haven't already, pick up your five free Trinity vouchers in the mail. I already did, so it's already disappeared, but uh, yeah, because of the new update, they always give you free vouchers, so that should definitely be picked up. And finally, in the store, of course. There is, oh, surprisingly, we did not get a Tierra skin. Instead, we got a Rachel skin for 188 skin vouchers. So that's a huge surprise to me. Um, it's also a pretty nice skin, especially if you use Rachel. So I would say it's a skin well worth picking up. I'm just surprised it's already been released. Now the question then is, when are we going to get Tiaris' Easter skin? Right? It has to come soon. So, I'm go because this skin, you have two weeks to get it, I'm just going to wait and see. Because I only have 220 skin vouchers, I'm going to have to pick one. So it'll either be Rachel's skin or Tiaris' skin. And personally speaking, I prefer... Although both of them are really cute, uh, I do prefer the Tierra skin overall. Like, in large part because I use Tierra constantly. Rachel, on the other hand, I actually don't use all that frequently. Okay. Rachel does get another skin in the future. And it's a Valentine skin, which is what you see here. So she's holding like a box of chocolate. She's in a white dress with pink ribbons all over it. And the sprite, in my opinion, is much prettier than the current skin that's available for Rachel. Right? So another image of that skin along with the other Valentine skin which is Varna. Right? So Varna is making cookies as you see here. And then the sprite, you know, if it's actually moving, you can see it here like this. So this would be her I think casting like a gospel skill or something similar, a buffing skill. Right? And finally this is Varna, her skin, uh, her sprite, sorry. So you can see that she's on a weird looking horse that can fly with a spear that has a heart on it. <laughs> so 
overall though, I would say this Rachel skin, to me, this Rachel skin is the prettier skin compared to the currently available one, which, don't get me wrong, the currently available one is pretty, but if I had to choose, I would try to, I personally would try to get the Tierra skin now, and then, you know, skip this one in favor of the other Valentine skin in the future. Although, once again, this is not a bad looking skin at all. Definitely, it can be a tough choice between this Celestial, uh, Celestial Herald skin and the Valentine skin. Hmm. Alright, so that was different. A completely different skin. And finally, of course, I mentioned that we should be getting a Lustrials exclusive, which I'm going to buy right now. Right. And also, there is Grenier's exclusive, which I am not going to buy. Right. But when you have seven or more buffs, counterattack damage increases by 50%. Right. Uh, <laughs> having seven buffs inherently is not that easy. But the increase in damage is very nice, for sure. Right. It potentially makes Grenier hit significantly harder. Maybe nearly as hard as Leaden. Maybe. So, yeah. So that's another one I purchased. I still have 950 challenge points. My limitation in truth is not challenge points, but epic martial spirits to upgrade all these exclusive items that I purchased. So I'm going to definitely upgrade that. I'm going to... I'm probably not going to fully build Elestrial's uh, headgear in this particular video, but I will at least enchant it. Right? So hopefully I'll get a good enchant quickly. But first, you know, upgrading it to level 20 is okay. Actually, it might be fairly... well, I have to buy it, so I'm not going to upgrade level 50 in the video. But I do have the Epic Martial Spirit saved up to easily upgrade this. And I'm going to start enchanting it for Breeze. I have 19 scrolls. To try to get a good enchant. Right. So that was a defense increasing one. Defense with attack. If that was hit points, I was done. Because <laughs> uh, generally speaking, I aim for hit points rather than defense here because her defense growth is only C. You know, so it doesn't help all that much. But I continue. So your goal is hit points and attack. Right. I got 5% attack and 8% hit points! Yes! That's it. You know, ideal, of course, this would be like, you know, 15% hit points, 5% attack, and then maybe more hit points or magic defense or defense, right? But you know what? I'm going to just settle for this. That is good enough. So I didn't have to use that. I didn't have to use that many enchant scrolls. And other than that, I'll probably upgrade the Slayer's Emblem to level 50 as well, using those remaining Epic Martial Spirits or using the... Slayer's Emblem that I got yesterday. Right. I can hold on to that. I think I'll just use up these ones for now because I have them. But I'll do both of this offline. So enchant-wise, my Illustral is pretty much complete already. The only thing would be if I replace the Hydra's Bow enchant. But ultimately, I plan to replace this Hydra's Bow entirely with another weapon. Right? Alder's Bow, for example. or you know. So I'm going to keep hold of that one and that enchant for now. Alright. So let's take a look again at the. Oh, so the next one ended up being Akka. <laughs> so I'm going to probably have to keep an eye out here for quite some time. <laughs> if I had drawn the done the thirty draw, I probably would have gotten the Akka here. But uh, regardless, you never know. No. It's not like it's preset in the first place, so it is very much a gamble. And I have to hope that I get Akka in my next 30. So other than the Akka draw, right? Uh, let's talk about some of the other things that will be included in this update. And first of all, at the top right, we see now there's chapter 6. So if I click over there, it sends me to basically the new locations on the world map. So Act 2, chapter 6 is up. And if we take a look carefully, we can see that there's a lot of roads over here which means that there will be other locations after that, right? So presumably chapter 6, then maybe this is chapter 7, maybe this is chapter 8 or something, and then chapter 9, you know, uh, maybe even chapter 10. I don't know. So we'll see about that. 
I'm guessing all the chapters are here, right? Let's say this is six, right? Maybe this is seven, this is eight here, and then this is maybe nine, this is nine here, and then, then presumably maybe this is ten or something. We'll see as I get through those battles. Right, so lots of videos to do. So another way to kind of check this, if I go into story and Yagdrasil's memories, uh, we can see that there's a bunch of new battles here. Uh, Glory of the Continent, right? And then maybe this 10 year cycle, and then another one, right? Unshakable Shadow. So all three of these certainly suggest that with three new additions, there should be more than three new chapters released with this update. So after this, the three C's, right? And we got three of them. Or we're supposed to get three of them with this patch. First and foremost, Sonya. Okay. Sonya's 3C is pretty much mostly considered top tier because it's a two range 3C, right? And it deals 1.6 times damage, where melee soldiers also attack. And if the enemy's defense is lower than their magic defense, 70% of your int is attacked, or 70% of your int is added to your attack before battle. Otherwise, before battle, add 70% of your attack to int and deal magic damage. Right? Additionally, it afflicts the enemy with Curse of Wounding, which prevents the enemy from being healed, dealing damage equal to 20% of the healing instead. The debuff lasts two turns. You know? And finally, if the enemy hero is a holy unit before battle, their skill range is reduced by one for one turn. So, This skill single-handedly makes Sonya actually very usable for Apex Arena because well she can be a one-shot she can one-shot enemies simply put with this skill and since it's a two range skill she can attack at two range so you know strike to charge forward that two point skill to attack and then in terms of soldiers you can it's your choice of melee soldiers or ranged soldiers right? since you can use either one uh, my knowledge is I think most people choose to use spider demons because they can they have that chance of reducing enemy's mobility and reducing enemy magic defense. But you don't have to use spider demons. You know you can use heaven's guard. You can use vampire bats. You know uh, whatever soldier you have built up can very can be used. The soldier selection will very much depend on what soldiers you think the enemy tank will bring. Right? If you think they're going to be, if you're, for example, if you're going to be attacking Landius, who reduces physical damage, you're going to definitely want the Spider Demons, right? If you're attacking another tank that maybe reduces magic damage, like maybe I don't know, let <laughs> Emmerich with Angels, right? Then you're going to want a uh, physical damage soldier. So that might be Bone Dinos or Undead Knights or Vampire Bats or Heaven's Guard or whatever. So, yeah. So Sonya, absolutely amazing now. Next, Wilder, whose 3C I will be unlocking later today because of the high stakes skill. Right. Consumes 99% of remaining hit points, triggering hero's talent death effect. Cannot affect your caster. At the same time, these units deal 15% increased damage and take 15% less damage, and it lasts three turns. So, right? Before fighting, restored hit points equals to five times Wilder's int, and it lasts three turns. And it also has basically the miracle buff. Absolutely amazing skill. The reason why I built up Wilder, really. So, definitely going to unlock this one later today. So, I'll have a video on that. And then the third 3C skill is. I actually can't recall off the top of my head, so I'm actually gonna have to scroll around to see if. One of these circle icons now has a empty part instead of a gold part. So Cherie already had it from the previous one. Chris already had it as well. Gerald and Layla previously had it. Wow. Was it Estelle or Sumeri? Estelle might have been it. You know what? My apologies. I'm going to have to check my notes here. It's I just remember that this, the last 3C was not one that I was interested in. That's why I, um, 
didn't really pay attention. Oh, it's Sumere. Right. I remember now. Yes, yeah, Sumere. Not Estelle. Estelle previously already had her 3C. But in brief. Because I don't have her built, I didn't really pay attention. But Enduring Hope is like a cheer effect with mobility increase and heals. Estelle, or Sumere, by comparison, her 3C, Wyvern Dance, okay, is another AoE attack skill. And it deals within two rings. And in addition to that, she herself gains Wyvern Dance, where the unit normal attack range is increased by one. And before entering battle, if your skill is higher than the enemy's, you will strike first and enter Super Guard. When friendly units within two blocks are attacked, you enter the battle instead of them. So this skill allows Sumeria to guard against both physical strikes as well as melee strikes, first of all. I think her regular skill only applies Lance Phallix, which only triggers for physical attacks, right? So this is a nice, this is a massive improvement on Sumeri, because she can now guard against both physical and magic attacks. Secondly, unit normal attack range is increased by one as well, meaning you can guard against two range attacks, long story short. Right? Normally, when you guard against a two range attack, only Sumeri would participate because she has uh, hero range increased by one. With this skill, the soldier range is also increased by one, allowing her to counterattack against magic attackers. And, and finally, the big advantage is, of course, the high skill portion. Right? So she attacks first, kind of like the way Amelia does. So the only question then is whether your Sumeria is strong enough to one-shot the enemy target and therefore take no damage, but overall a very very powerful skill for Sumeria. Definitely changes up the meta, right? The current meta for the longest time has been only Juggler and Landius are good tanks. Now, you know, Sumere, Estelle have become significantly better, right? Uh, Emilia, if you actually have her build, could be a tank, although getting a faction buff from her can sometimes be difficult. And yeah, we'll see. So they're making a lot of the other tanks more viable for PvP. Always a good thing. Changing up the meta, making more things possible. So I'm going to be waiting for a while to draw for the Akaya and Brenda banner, so I'm just gonna end this video here and do the summoning in a separate video. Thanks for watching everyone, Nitro out.